Good evening. I'm Jim Zirin, and this is The Digital Age. Last Christmas Day, a 23-year-old Nigerian terrorist named Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalib boarded a Northwest Airlines flight bound for Detroit from Amsterdam. Strapped into his underwear was a lethal device strong enough to blow up the plane and its 278 passengers. Fortunately, the bomb failed to detonate, and Abdul Mutalib was overpowered by other passengers. Osama bin Laden has accepted responsibility for the foiled attack, but American security authorities admit that they had sufficient clues to have kept Abdul Mutalib off that plane, but they failed to do so, saying there was a systemic error. But make no mistake about it, there was a failure on the part of American intelligence, which gives rise to our question this evening. Were the missed signals involving the underpants bomber Abdul Mutalib the result of digital failure or human failure? And here to discuss this issue with us tonight, we are fortunate to have the Honorable Thomas Kane, former governor of the state of New Jersey and chair of the 9-11 Commission. Tom, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be here again. Now, when all this happened, you said that Abdul Muttalib did us a favor. What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I mean, luckily he failed. The, uh, one of my problems has been the American people have a very short attention span. And my worry has been that the people as a whole and the, this administration had just not been focusing on the dangers of terrorism the way they ought to be. And it wasn't as if they weren't doing other things. I mean, they were focused on health care, uh, global warming, or the economy, or what have you. But whatever you're focusing on, you never forget that the primary responsibility of government is the safety of the American people. And I just don't think they had the attention of the United States government the way this issue deserves. And so I, I think this, this incident, all of a sudden, this came right to the president's desk, and he focused. And now I think he's giving more support to the Director of Homeland Security. He's paying more attention to the Director of National Intelligence, the CIA, the FBI, and the other agencies that are responsible. And I think that may have, that's why I said he may have done us a favor. Well, President Obama said uh, the following. He said, quote, while I understand intelligence is hard, and I'll never fault anybody for not having full intelligence, what I will fault is when we have full intelligence that is not shared. Now, wasn't that eerily reminiscent of uh, what you encountered after 9-11 when you were on the commission? Yeah, that's what's so frustrating, because it's exactly, exactly the same issue. It's very close. Now, some people in the administration are saying, well, it wasn't deliberately not shared this time, but it was deliberate or not, it wasn't shared. I mean, the, the, to me, some of it's just common sense. I mean, if you'd been sitting in that embassy, and one of the most prominent people in the country walk into your embassy, sit down with you and say, you know, I'm worried about my son. He's become radicalized. We think he may be in Yemen. Uh, wouldn't you have reacted in some way or other? Well, particularly when these are trained CIA investigators yeah, who are sitting interrogating right in the room. Him. They're right in the room. Instead, it sort of went in a folder that sort of wended its way up to Washington. And therefore, it never got put together with the other information we had, such as there was something going on in Yemen and there was an operative who may be trained, planned, trained to attack the United States and all of that. Never got put together. So they didn't share the information, but part of it is common sense. I think that father alone ought to set off alarm bells, alarm bells not ought to have gone right to the top in Washington. Instead, the, I guess the NCCC, which is the National Council, had, had the information, but they just never talked about it and share it the way they should have. Well, and, they uh, blame the fact that uh, somebody in the embassy in Nigeria misspelled his name. Yeah, uh, now, you know, Google has a spell check. If uh, <laughs> I, I, I put in uh, Thomas Kane and I yeah. spell your name wrong, uh, it'll say, do you mean Thomas Kane and your name will be spelled right. Yeah. Well, uh, the, uh, uh, we have nothing like that in the intelligence community. I guess we don't. This has always been one of the frustrations. You know, even at the time of 9-11, these hijackers had credit cards in their own name. They had driver's license in their own names. And they were on lists from the CIA uh, as terrorists, but they just never shared those lists with the FBI, so they never got internally. But the credit card companies, if you do something wrong in your credit card, you know, that sets off all sorts of alarms. They know who you are right away, and they'll get you right away. 
But for some reason, our national intelligence doesn't seem to have computers that are as good as the ones some, some, some of the private sector does. And that's, that's unacceptable. I mean, not to catch somebody because somebody misspelled a name on the way up. It's crazy in this kind of age we live in where you and I wouldn't miss something like that on our computer. Totally crazy. And, and don't you think they might have asked uh, the father what was the son's date of birth? And do you happen to have a photograph of your son? Yeah. Uh, what does well, he look like? It's so uh, much. I mean, it, you know. it's just, and again, some of this is technical. Some of it's common sense. I mean, that's, that's common sense that you don't... Uh, you know, pursue that, and, and, and uh, you know, we were very fortunate because he was, uh, that he didn't, he didn't go off the way he planned to. He didn't have any, I guess he set the side of the plane afire, but they were able to put that out, and there was never a breach in the wall, and they were able to get him, and the only person he really injured seriously, I guess, was himself, and that was, you know, a fire in your underwear would be damaging <laughs> to you, but, <laughs> but that's the only Could way. Could have been a disaster. Yeah, that's right. Could have been a disaster, and uh, now, hopefully, we're alert, and we're going to uh, pay attention, and, I think we've got to make some fundamental changes now to make sure we're paying attention and that this administration is focused on this issue. Now, uh, John Brennan, who, as you know, was in counterterrorism and mm -hmm. uh, intelligence in the Bush administration, he's now the White House uh, advisor on counterterrorism. He disagrees with you. He says this is not the issue uh, that we encountered uh, after 9-11. Uh, uh, did you uh, agree with what he had to say? I respect John Brennan. I mean, he's a <laughs> He's an expert, and he's doing one well, I think, and actually I'm going to be meeting with him tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. But no, I don't agree with him on that issue. Uh, some of these issues are the same, and they come together, and you're either sharing information or not. His, his use the word deliberately. This information wasn't deliberately not shared. Well, what does it make a difference if it's deliberate or not? I mean, if the information isn't shared, you can't put it together, you can't connect the dots, and you can't... Uh, Catch the guy, and, and our whole system, you got to remember what, how this system is based now. I mean, we do a lot of talk about whether we should have different screening devices, whether we should see you all naked or not naked, and all that kind of thing. The system's not designed to catch people at that point. The whole system is designed to keep the bad guys off planes to the United States to begin with. That's the reason you have these lists. And if you go into the, one of the centers in Washington that I've been in, you will see before you every passenger who's getting in every plane coming to the United States for the next two or three hours. And everyone is run against these lists. So the whole idea is don't let them get in the plane to begin with. Don't give them a visa. Don't let them buy a ticket. Don't let them get in the plane. Uh, once they bought a ticket, you know, then our best defense, I guess, is the passengers. <laughs> because they find ways to get past screening. They usually do. Well, God help us if our yeah. best defense is the passengers. But No, no, no. Uh, no. That, now, that's, that's, no, that's serious business. Because right now, if you and I were on a plane together, I think, and you saw some guy lean down to light his shoe, you'd jump him. Probably with me with you. <laughs> and so would a bunch of other passengers. That is a really good defense because remember the whole psychology before 9 11 was if somebody's going to do something to hijack a plane, you're probably going to land in Cuba, you're probably going to spend a night or two there, then you're going to return safely. So don't interrupt them, don't do anything to stop what they're doing. Now the whole psychology has changed. So passengers, you know, if, again, if you and I get in a plane and we see somebody acting suspiciously, we got and I've seen, that had this, you have probably too, you, you have your eye on them. And you may be reading a book, but you're also looking at that guy. For sure. Yeah, and, and if they do something wrong, you're going to alert somebody or do something yourself or what have you. And that, that is a, probably a stronger defense the United States government can ever give us, that passenger defense. Now, there are a number of different lists. Uh, before 9-11, you had a no-fly list. Yeah. How many people were on the no-fly list? Before 9-11? Oh, very few. Very few. Very few. And very few. Uh, then after 9-11, it was expanded. Yeah. And uh, now none of the 19 9-11 hijackers were on the no-fly list, were they? No. Uh, but, no. uh, ab and then in addition, there is a so-called tide list, which uh, I think is, is called the watch list, yeah. terrorist watch list. Yeah. And then there's another list that's uh, above the tide list, but below the, the no-fly list. Now, you have three different lists, and now you have... Thousands and thousands of people on all three lists. Abdul yeah. Muttalib made the uh, Tide list. Yeah. He didn't make the no-fly list or the other yeah. list for special screening. Yeah. Now, uh, I mean, now you have a sea of names on three lists, and which ones do you uh, prevent from boarding planes and which ones don't you? Well, that's the problem, and, and, and if there's any doubt, you prevent them from getting on the plane until they're fully investigated. And I actually was talking with the head of the National Terror Terrorism Center uh, last week, 
That's and, Michael Leiter. Yeah, and what Leiter said to me was, he said, you know, before uh, this incident, all the pressure coming at me from all directions, the Congress or else, was to get people off the list and don't put any more people on the list. He said, now that's changed. Now people are saying, oh, hey, why didn't you have this guy on the list? You said, look at the list. But he said, the whole pressure was going the other direction. So he says, I was fighting it, but uh, it was very hard to get people on that list. Now he said, it's changed. Now, now you know, if somebody's suspicious and we get a real worry about him, he's going to go on that list. And if he deserves to be off the list, he's got to prove why he's off the list. He said, that's, he said, Leiter said, I think that's the way it should be. Uh, now, Abdul Muttalib uh, was uh, on a list, but not the right list. That's right. Uh, but he buys a one-way ticket uh, for cash, yep. uh, and uh, he uh, has a multiple entry visa to the United States, which he probably shouldn't have had. Yep. Uh, and uh, he uh, is allowed to... Now, aren't those uh, any uh, telltale signs of, uh, that are suspicious? I mean, shouldn't he have been stopped? This was uh, the in classic Amsterdam. Yeah, it was the classic profile of a terrorist. <laughs> he did everything a terrorist would do, except have a sign. I'm a yeah, terrorist. That's right. <laughs> and, and 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 so uh, and it, we we didn't do it. And, and the president himself has said basically this language. He said we screwed up. And uh, good for him for recognizing that. And the question now: Are we taking the steps that we should be taking to change the way we operate? And one thing Leiter told me, as I say, is we're going to be put more people on that list of people who shouldn't fly planes. Uh, but we should be more alert. I mean, and, and I think that we're looking at the way the whole, uh, Lee Hamilton and I was my vice chairman at 9-11 Commission are back, and we're doing some work now looking at the whole setup of intelligence. You know, we've got a director of national intelligence. How is that working? How is it working? Well, there have been some problems. I mean, uh, I mean, and, this and was the idea you pioneered. Yes, and, and be because the lack of information sharing, and we said somebody's, there was nobody who headed intelligence, really. The head of the CIA had the nominal title, but we paid attention to him, <laughs> and his a big enough job running the CIA. So we didn't have any heads, so there was nobody to knock heads and bring these people together. And what's happened now is under, the, uh, under this guy, uh, that's Danny Blair. Danny Blair. Now everybody's going to have to come together, and that's the idea. And he's able to knock heads. Now the only problem is that the Congress uh, weakened the legislation that we passed, so he doesn't have as much power as we recommended. And we said, okay, the president can take care of that. If the president wants to give him the authorities that the Congress took out of the legislation, he can do it. So we think we're going to be all right. And so what we want to look at now is what authorities he have and what he doesn't have. How big is the bureaucracy? Is it too big, not big enough? How is he getting along with the other agencies? He had a rather public fight with the CIA a little while ago. And uh, is the president giving him the authority he needs to do the job? Because all that is necessary if our system is going to work. What kind of issues are you and Lee Hamilton looking into? Well, first of all, the whole director of national intelligence, the whole idea. And then we're looking at some other issues. We're looking at the whole issue of congressional... Um, uh, the, the, only, the only people who paid no attention to our recommendations is the United States Congress. <laughs> and that's very, very important because we can laugh at the Congress, but, you know, if, if we're looking at transportation or we're looking at the environment or we're looking at uh, education, there are hearings, they're public. You and I go, we can comment on them, we can say what's right or what's wrong, and we can get our voice heard or, or at least find out if we don't really like what's going on. Intelligence is secret. So if the intelligence agencies are not working well, the only people who know it are the United States Congress. And if they're not doing their oversight, nobody's doing it. These oversight. are the oversight committees. Yes. And, and, and right now, oversight is still, well, one of the congressmen used the word dysfunctional. It's not working, still not working right. And they ignored all our recommendations. And I said to a committee the other day, I said, all right, you don't want to do what we recommended. Do something else. I mean, right now, Homeland Security, you know, Janet Napolitano reports to 80 different committees. Yeah. I mean, that's no oversight at all when you report. She spends a third of her time, she and her top staff, testifying. So who oversees the overseers? Yeah. That, that's the I mean, it's, 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 it's nuts. And, 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 and the same thing is true, by the way, of the intelligence committees, which don't have any fiscal responsibility, so the intelligence community pays no attention to them. Now, let me ask you this about airport security. Uh, we tend to rely on these, uh, the magnetometers now, we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on additional scanners, 
which may not even do the trick. Uh, the Israelis, which, who have mm. magnetometers and scanners, rely on something else. Yep. They talk to everyone boarding a plane. That's right. And uh, either uh, leaving Israel or arriving at Israel. And they ask them, uh, you know, where did you come from? Why are you here? Uh, where are you going? Uh, and they rely on those interviews. And it's been very, very successful. Shouldn't we do something like that? Of course we should. Yeah. Uh, we shied away from it because people, people call it profiling. Well, nobody's going to profile racially. Everybody knows that's not right. But profiling is one of the tools. If you see somebody acting suspiciously in the airport and their name is on some list and they happen to be an a Arab male between the ages of 18 and 29, uh, then that last thing may be the thing that makes you stop them and pull them out and ask questions and find out what they're doing there. Where they were trained in Yemen, which yeah, is right. Osama bin Laden's yeah. ancestral homeland. Exactly right. You know. Uh, so, uh, you know, the Israelis are right, and, and they've proved they're right. I mean, I Israel is probably the most targeted country in the world, still is. And the fact that you or I can get at Al Airlines and feel safer than we do on one of our airlines because they've never had an attack, never even had close to an attack, shows how good their system is. When you find something that's really good like that, uh, why, not, why not imitate them? Or any airline going to or from Israel, you get exactly the same yeah. type of screening. Yeah, right, and, and that's why there's never been an incident, never been a problem. So it is an unwieldy regime to have all of these agencies under a director of national intelligence. You have counterterrorism and NSA and uh, yeah. CIA. And well, or 17, alphabet soup. 17 different intelligence yeah. agencies. That's why you need a director. Yeah. And that's why we put under the director a National Counterterrorism Center, and the idea is that they meet at the Counterterrorism Center every morning. And the idea is they exchange information from various agencies around the table. And that can be very important. That's, that's the way the system's supposed to work. Now, is it working? Things are much better. I mean, there's no question there's more information shared since before 9-11. Since before things are much better. We're doing things better. but. They say that 500,000 pieces of information come in almost every day. Mm. So to sort all those little bits of information, this is a very, very difficult job, and we can't say it's that easy. So it's not only like connecting the dots, it's finding the dots themselves. Yes, right, yeah. right, and, and making sure that the important dots are the ones that come to the fore. So this is an immense job, and the analysts are extremely important. And, and for years in intelligence, you know, the agents and the other people were given all the prestige and the money and everything else. And the analysts sort of, sort of took a back seat. Well, there's nobody more important than the analyst right now who's going to take all those pieces of information, sort out what's important, what isn't important, and pass it up to the people who have to have that information, but, including the President of the United States. But that's really a judgment call, isn't it? I mean, yeah. are they going to have the necessary judgment to know what's that's relevant right. and what's important? That's why Like the, the father coming into the embassy, yeah. that's important. That's important. That's why these guys are going to be good. That's why the analysts shouldn't be second-class citizens. They should be first-class citizens, and they should be given just as much prestige, pay, whatever. As, um, as anybody else in the intelligence business. And, and I think that's starting to happen. <coughs> At least they're giving it lip service. But it's got to really happen. What about sharing with foreign intelligence services and, uh, and, and the foreign office? Yeah. For example, Great Britain had mm. uh, revoked this guy's visa. Yeah. And uh, we might have had access to that information. Well, we did. We, just didn't. we did. We just we ignored did. it. We just didn't, didn't use it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the, didn't think that was important. Or actually, was... that side of it's going pretty darn well. Even, even some, uh, some countries who you and I would say, well, we don't get along with them. You know, they're not on our wavelength at all. Even some of those countries are sharing now intelligence information with us because uh, they don't want to be attacked either. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, we have a pretty good information sharing system now around the world through the various intelligence agencies. And, and you know, in Europe particularly, they're just as worried as we are, if not more worried, because they've got more of these they call them lone wolf terrorists who, who may not be connected to anybody, but nevertheless, uh, they don't have the margin of society we do, so they've become alienated and they're... they're now, in uh, your 9-11 uh, Commission report, you said the time has come to usher our intelligence network into uh, the information age, you called it. We call it the digital age. Mm. Uh, and uh, apparently, uh, there was, was no spell check facility, and the mm. president said, 
uh, we have to upgrade our software and uh, yeah. and the like. Was this really a digital failure that they didn't have the digital tools necessary? Not really. I think I, I think that was one of the problems. Uh, and spell check wasn't there, or what have you. But uh, they no. didn't use Google. Right? They didn't. You no, know, and they didn't. Uh, have, they didn't have common sense. No. I mean, there are whole new problems going to face us right now. I mean, one of the things we're going to do in this new group I'm looking at that we're working right now is the agencies are very concerned with the possibility now of homegrown terrorists. And we've never had those before. But now these, this group who went to, went to Pakistan, presumably to practice jihad, these are all American citizens, young men. And, and, and so if we've got to prepare for a possibility of some homegrown terrorists, that's a whole new problem and requires new intelligence and new information and new ways of looking at things. So we've got to, we've got to stay one step ahead of these people. We can't be one step behind. Well, Senator Schumer wants to uh, eliminate multiple entry visitors from certain countries, uh, which he calls hotbeds of terrorism, so that they'd have to re reapply for a visa every time uh, they want to come to the United States. Uh, would you favor such a proposal? Yeah, but we've got to be careful because, uh, again, this, this is part of foreign policy, too, how yeah. we treat these countries. And remember, the, 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 although the 19 hijackers all came from Saudi Arabia, they came from Saudi Arabia because they wanted a Saudi Arabian passport. Yeah. So that would be easy. They didn't come from Saudi Arabia. So it's not hard to go into some country and get a new passport. Uh, so I'm not sure just saying if you're, if you're Yemeni, you shouldn't have it. Yeah, or uh, a lot of them come from Britain. Would we put Britain on the list yeah. as a hotbed of terrorism? No, I, I think and then if they're citizens, there's no issue of yeah. a visa. So. No, I understand why the senator is saying that, but I think there are other things that uh, we should be doing first. How about more air marshals on international flights? Well, that helps, sure, no. uh, especially if they're disguised. I mean, I, yeah. some of these air marshals... <laughs> they're I, pretty I, obvious. Yeah, I see them. They're pretty <laughs> obvious on the plane, and I think maybe we should... Uh, Disguise the image. Well, there are other things. I mean, you know, a terrorist can walk right now into a into a gun store anywhere and buy a gun. He can be he can be on the terrorist list, and he can walk into the United States and buy a gun. And that probably shouldn't be allowed either. Uh, what about Yemen? I mean, you were critical of the Clinton administration for exercising diplomacy toward Afghanistan. Uh, is uh, Obama's approach to Yemen sufficient, or should we? be tougher with sanctions well I think he's being pretty tough I mean we're uh, you know we're bombing bombing in Yemen <laughs> I mean, we've got predators over there yeah that's pretty tough yeah no I don't I don't have any problem I, I, I think Obama is now focused on the problem I think his administration is being tough I think the people who I've worked with in the national security area are pretty good and professionals in the area so I think as long as they keep the focus and as long as the president gives the support to these people that they need and if there are disputes or anything else, he's willing to step in personally and solve them, uh, then I think we'll be all right. Now, as you know, Abdul Muttalib was arrested by the FBI. He's been indicted. He's going to be tried in federal court if he pleads not guilty. Should we have proceeded against him criminally, or should we have uh, allowed him to be interrogated by special CIA interrogators and then uh, uh, sent to a military tribunal? I think we should have interrogated him because we know other things are going on in Yemen. He wasn't trained alone. Yeah. He wasn't trained with other people. And if you arrest him and immediately said, here are two lawyers, and the two lawyers look at you and say, don't say a thing. Um, you know, I, I don't think foreigners who come here to attack us deserve the kind of protection that you and I do as American citizens. I just don't believe it. And particularly when they may have information. I'm not saying torture. I'm against torture and don't torture people. But, but there are other ways of getting information. And I think to allow somebody to be questioned who comes to this country to do us harm is common sense. Well, uh, it's not about making a case against him. The evidence no. against him was overwhelming yeah. without even talking to That's him. That's right. Uh, no, it's it, about it, other cases that might exist or other attacks that might right. be out there and people he knows who are part of his network. He knows what's going on. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, much better than we do. And to find out what's going on over there, to find out how serious they are, how sophisticated they are, what weapons they're using, who is over there with him training, who else might come to do his harm. That's important to all of us. And I think the government made a great mistake in not trying to get that information out of him. Now, do we need a 1225 commission like the 911 commission? No, I don't think we need a, I don't need a commission, but I think we should keep Congress's feet to the fire. I mean, I think, and, and the Obama administration. I mean, we've got to, we've got to make absolutely sure that they're focused. And they're focused on this issue, no matter what else is going on. Everybody's focused on Haiti now, that's rightly so. But no matter what you're focused on, don't let go of this one. Uh, 
You said when you were last on this program that uh, we're a lot safer than we were before 9-11, and much of that is thanks to you. Mm. Uh, but are we safer today than we were before 1225? Yeah, I think we are. You think uh, we've learned, he did us a favor I then. think he did us a favor. I think we learned from that, and I think we, uh, we've got to, um, we got to pay attention. And, 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 and that's what I think we're all doing right now. But we can't, again, the American people's attention span is very short. And we can't allow it to be short on this one. We got to, it's going to be a long war and a long problem, and we've got to be with it. So we have to wrap up. And Tom Kane, I have mm -hmm. a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, were the missed signals about the underpants bomber the result of a digital failure or a human failure? Basically human. Basically human. Uh, digital problems, but real failures were human. Basically human. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming by. And thank you for coming by. Tune in next week for more about the digital age. For the digital age, I'm Jim Zirin. Good night and all the best.